Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What uh, Shakespeare's English sounded like, and how we know. I heard that you just have to, like, pronounce all of the consonants, and then you're good to go. Like a knife or a knife. Or, uh, that's what I heard, okay? Uh, let's learn. Native Lang. Cool. Shakespeare didn't sound like this. And he didn't sound like this, either. But if you were back in 1610 and you snagged a couple front row tickets to the globe, what kind of English would you hear? Can I fix a knuff? Or did I? Come on. I have a confession. A tough one for a language nerd. Here goes. I never really got into Shakespeare. I remember the theater geeks, the girl with one hand raised, head turned, chanting lines to whom exactly? Maybe a poetry loving squirrel. Nah, wasn't for me. I was into Legos and languages, which is how I ended up unintentionally parsing Homer in Greek before I had to face Shakespeare. Yes, had to. A class assignment. I think it was The Tempest. I skimmed just enough to pass a quiz. Then I honestly would have shelved the bard forever. I think some people, even though you like a certain category, just there's a part of it you don't, you're not that interested in. That's normal. But for that one stray remark, as the theater geeks donned their best British accents, a random gadfly sneered. Heh, <laughs> you know what Shakespeare really sounded like? He sounded like us. No. What? Had I missed something about Shakespeare? Something that took linguistic detective work to solve. Something like... His poor spelling. It's there in the bad quartos secretly scribbled by some bootlegger in the audience. It's there in the good quartos in the first folio, too. Even on his own grave, Dig and Friend look almost childish. And his stacked they and that keep... A simplified Germanic letter, Thorn. Hmm. This isn't his spelling. 1400. Chaucer's English was a very readable Tonga. So readable that 75 years later, Mr. Caxton imported a printing press to cash in on that readability. But one day, a merchant came to town and ordered eggs. A woman said, sorry, I speak no French. The merchant got mad. He wasn't speaking French, he just wanted some eggs. Someone jumped in to help. Oh, he means iron. Do you, question, do you guys think that accents are going to go sort of like extinct? Because it seems like accents develop when two groups that speak the same language are separated for a long enough time and you kind of just come up with slang and you shorten words or you give up words or you change it. And then eventually you just can't understand each other. And then that's like a whole new link. What was I going to say? I had a point. What was my point? Okay, maybe I... Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, um, I remember. So, back then, when you don't have, like, the internet or movies or TV shows that, like, people see a lot and, and it's harder to, to come up with slang that everyone doesn't take on. And so, I, I'd imagine accents are a product of less... In interchange does that make sense i just i can't imagine the amount of accents in the in the in this time i'd explain that terribly i axton griped lo what shoulder man in these days no rate eggs or iron unleash the spelling debates how to spell knisht when it was evolving into neat should correction have a c guys i'm getting too warm i gotta change into a short sleeve shirt okay And why, oh why, did Chaucer's vowels fall apart so fast? By 1600, the ongoing great vowel shift was turning E into I, E became E, e and O was U. Ooh. Welcome to early modern English, Shakespeare's tongue. Good friend, for Jesus' sake, forbear to dig the dust and close it air. Not here, air. Just one of many rhymes that, well, they aren't rhymes anymore. Pledeth rhymed with dreadeth, are with are and own with alone. You find craters, 
raisins. I went fine with company. Schuld kept its O and didn't match wood. Extra credit spell two. That makes sense. That's like whenever I hear a, like I read a rhyme that was in a different language and it still somehow rhymes in English, I get suspicious and I don't think it's real. Words that sound like society and rhyme with variety. Haha. <laughs> You get play and pray and pray and say. Pray and but say. then the rhymes with say. So wait, were all of these actually there? The? Or maybe the was there? There. Well, say. fortunately, we find ear witness accounts of a meat meat merger. Say was in the process of merging with C. With caution, rhymes may even help us recover puns, like probably resins and maybe boil. And rhythm, Boiled. like those iams my teacher made us drum out in class, those count how many syllables were in, say, enclosed. Uh, two. Two syllables. Except here it demands three. Enclosed. Meter can also reveal stress. Not housewifery, but usifrey. Usifrey. Okay, you're learned now. You learned. see and say and says a noun and a verb. It's no longer strange for you to hear, I know the resin, Ledoy. And you can stomach the news that Shakespeare's name may have been Shakespeare or Shakespeare. <laughs> Shakespeare. In 1889, Alexander Ellis added one more piece of evidence, modern dialects. Dialects contain traces of a time before English had a proper accent. People who still don't merge meat with mate, witches that aren't witches, Undropped R's, H-less arts, and Jaren Endens. I wonder, like, what the average amount of of generations it takes for a language to become mutually unintelligible. You know, like in a case, especially where there's no media, like there is today, where it's much easier to catch on to new phrases and agree on some. But in a time when there's no internet, no phones. Like, how much time has to be, or generations has to go by, on average, for two groups who spoke the same language to not be able to understand each other? Sounds downright Shakespearean. Like some dialects still do, he used both though and polite you. Thou hast, thou art, you have, your. And that third person, eth, like in Shath, was still competing with us. And while data crunchers deflate legends of his peerless vocabulary, he was en third singular. I hate these grammatical terms. Third person singular. Third person. So first person is I. Second person is he. Slash they. What is third? Uh, I I hated this stuff. And while data crunchers deflate legends of his peerless vocabulary, he was endlessly inventive with meaning and syntax. Try out this word order. Though I with death and with reward did threaten on- Though I with death and with reward- Encourage him not doing it and being done. Not do it and being done. Though I with death and with reward did threaten and- Playful attain threaten and encourage him not doing it- Threaten and encourage him, not doing it. And being done. And being done. Playful a tangle for audiences to untie on the spot. So, what about listening to a whole play? Linguist David Crystal tested that in a newly reconstructed globe, thrown back into an era of standing, heckling, and OP, original pronunciation, Overpowered. playgoers detected suspicious traces of one particular dialect, their own. There's something universal about learning to pronounce. We all come as strangers to Shakespeare's sounds, whether you're a theater geek who quotes Hamlet by heart, or you're me who am about to finish animating this and read it for the very first time. I thank you patrons for unlocking this and keeping me creating, and to everyone watching, I pray thee tare and subscribe for language. Really cool channel, I get so frustrated by my, by my inability to
I just uh, something about language just really makes me have to work my brain and that other subjects don't demand as much proactive paying attention. Does that make sense? Cool video though. Uh not though. It's a cool video for sure. Native Lang, awesome. I'm going to do future English, I think, next. Bye guys. Hope you're doing well. Cheer up. See you next time.